Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter for uh, basic Sorgonomics here. Uh, and uh, this morning, well, hey, first of all, big thanks to everybody that's responding from uh, the show's the last couple of days. Uh, here, great stuff. Uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, especially the, the social media topic that we had from uh, Dan Hooven yesterday. I hope you guys have checked them out on Instagram and the Twitters. Great photographer over there. Today, um, we're going to talk shop a little bit more on the video side. I feel like we haven't done this for a while. Not social media, not anything else, just video production. Actually, after this weekend, coming off of the big uh, Meadville show, uh, Night of the Superstars 4, by the way, now available on digital download and DVD pre-order at PittsburghWrestling.com if you want to check that out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, one big thing is uh, I love to switch video. That sounds really weird, doesn't it? Um, but I love, I, you know, ever since high school, um, uh, you know, I moved, I, this is a story maybe we'll do on a podcast some other time, but I went to a school that had a video program, high school. Um, in the second year, they had a studio they had put in. They were going through the renovations, and by the second year, I got to take advantage of that studio. And they had the live news show every day for, you know, that home period thing um, that, that you would get in high school. Which is alien to me because I was in the in the studio uh, during this time, and uh, I was typically the switcher because nobody else wanted to do it because everybody else there was certainly um, there for the easy grade, you know, all the jocks and stuff, and uh, and but I loved it. I I, I, don't, I don't know if it was the pressure. I don't know if it was uh, in control a little bit or something like that. Um, but uh, taking that direction and and doing the live switch, uh, I always thought was fun. And so when I had the opportunity to take over for the wrestling production, um, I liked seeing how the guy before me, Tony F with Digital Horizons, was doing it with the live switch. And, and he did it, and, and things were basically ready to go for the DVD. And I figured that is, that's definitely a, a method I would be into. And I, I couldn't wait for the opportunity to do the live switch. Uh, you know, even doing the live switch on, on post-editing uh, with multicam and, and Final Cut Pro, I, I think, is, 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 is fun to me. And, um, and I've kind of developed my own style with it, and apparently people like it. And as, if you're on the video, this is actually footage of Tommy Dreamer versus uh, Rhino. Yes, the two ECW guys uh, kicking butt there Saturday night in Meadville. And uh, we have uh, two cameras, and it's S-Video, yes, uh, but it's indie wrestling. You know, as we talked about before on some of the other shows, it's indie wrestling. Stuff happens. That's why we can't have nice things. And also, we don't have the budget for it. Um, and plus, the target was always DVD, and we're, we're, we're trying to see if we can find alternatives to get it up to HD here and still have that live switch because everybody likes having it, you know. I, I have, if I wanted to, I could have the digital download up for everybody the next day if I didn't give myself a day off um, in general. Uh, but but typically, I because of the way my, my week works out, um, it's usually up by Wednesday, the, sh the show after, if, if I'm there and have the full rig and uh, have the live switching opportunity. And that's really, you know, really handy when we have stuff like this, when they're going up the entrance ramp, partially into the crowd, doing crazy stuff because it was an extreme rules match. Um, but we can follow and we can jump back and forth and, and we can get Chachi at ringside into position. Um and especially this, especially with pro wrestling, they do not give me much of a heads up unless something very, very significant is happening. Um, but uh, so it's a lot of really seat of our pants kind of stuff and, and, and working to be in the right place at the right time as much as we can. Um, but really just adapting to a situation as well, which uh, is the most fun, it, it, you know, to, to be on our toes with that situation. Um I don't know. I, you know, I, I wanted to go into this kind of talking my, about my philosophies about video switching, uh, but then I realized it just kind of happens. Um, you, you kind of have a feel for it. Uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, especially what I'm doing here is really just trying to emulate what I see on TV as much as I can, and I can only do so much, you know, to direct my guys. We only have one camera out there, so so there's a lot of uh, deciding what we're going to do and what we're going to let go because we just simply don't have enough cameras. For instance, at the beginning of this match, there was actually a, uh, there was actually a, a, a spot where um, the Delaney's were actually joining us, our Pittsburgh band, uh, doing very well for themselves. And they actually played Tommy Dreamer's music, um, you know, covered the Alice in Chains song from ECW uh, to play him out, which was really cool. And I wanted to get a shot of the band. I didn't know the band was there until I set up all my cameras. I, I knew they were there before, but I didn't know they were coming again. Yeah, nobody tells me. Um, and we're trying to get a shot of them. And I'm pulling, I'm like, okay, uh, you know, hard can, the one up 
you know, the higher cam that you see on, on the wide shots there. Uh, okay, try to get like some shots uh, from where you're at of the band playing and, and, and the singer. I'll switch back and forth. And uh, when we came back, I tried to transition them back. And, uh, and the music's playing, you know, many of you guys don't hear me on the headsets so well. And I have my ringside guy stop following Tommy Dreamer around, go back the other side. Uh, because that's that's a motion we usually do on entrances. And meanwhile, my hard cam guy is still transitioning back to the main ring from all the way over here. And I just have no shot of the guy or no shot, no usable shot, period. One is just just panning through the crowd and the other one's the guy's feet as he's getting into position. And it just misses. And and, and I realize and, and, you know, what happened is I'm overstretching. You know, this is the thing where you have a third camera that can pick up all the different sides of what's going on right and uh and you have kind of a safety also a lot of times when you look at wwe shows they actually have two cameras two hard cameras and so we're trying to do so much you know and that's where i think you know i get the guys out there and a lot of times especially when i have somebody new coming on they're trying to emulate that too they're, they're like well you have this wide shot but then you have this close-up shot from from that angle too from up in the stands and uh but realize there's two cameras and then you have two cameras one on each side maybe a third one floating around in case they need it um you just can't do that with two cameras <laughs> um i know i used to and uh and and some in my ringside guys t tend to um try to get those shots on the other side of the ring but it's like by the time they get there half the time you've missed a shot so uh, a lot of, lot of it is um, kind of reminding these guys that, yeah, it's your job to get all the good shots and make these guys look good. But to a certain extent, the wrestlers themselves, especially the guys like Rhino and Tommy Dreamer, the guys that have been on TV, the guys that really want to be on TV and are figuring it out, um, know to look for that camera as well. And know that if I'm going to do a hold on this guy and jab him in the face and do this stuff. I'm going to look to where that camera is. Okay, that camera's up there. This guy's over on the right usually, and I'm going to follow that. It's not a matter of you chasing the action. The action should find you for the most part, um, especially if it's mostly in-ring action to a, to a point here. So, um, so there's a little bit of it. There's a little bit of what we're doing for wrestling, and um, and, and and easily, easily. The stuff we do with professional wrestling is consistently the hardest thing that we do around here. To be on, be live on the show, you know, be ready to go. And this isn't one of those cases, but even more so, if you're like, well, it's no problem, you can pick, fix it in post. Also, remember, when we go do the court time shows in Elizabeth, we have a giant screen. If I screw up, 400 people see it. So there's a little bit of pressure there. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, since you know, we don't have much uh, budget or people to work with us, it, it's me switching. It's me talking with the guys on the headset in one ear. I got one earbud in the other ear, one of the nice noise-canceling ones, so I can hear pretty good uh, everything going on. And I'm trying to make sure the crowd and the commentators are on a decent level, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm sure somebody's trying to tell me, hey, we got an interview in the back after this that I didn't tell you about, you know, which I got to send a guy to the back. Again, I only have two cameras, so don't do anything wild out there when I only have one camera on you guys uh, when I'm transitioning to the next uh, situation. Um, this is this is what we deal with, and this is fun. Um, you know, we're not WWE. We don't have a script and production meetings all day long, it, and, and things do change at the last minute. So there's a little insight of what's going on with me. Um... Where we do this crazy action for the International Wrestling Cartel, of course, and Renegade Wrestling Alliance. All those shows available. Um, I've been on production for them. Main per, main guy on production for them uh, since the beginning of 2012, and all of those shows are available up there on digital download and DVD for both companies. Jeez, over three years of shows, around 12 shows each a year. For each company, I might be nearing 100 shows I've done with these guys. That's a lot. So there you go. Let me know what you think. Any commentary? Are you a video producer? And am I doing things ass backwards? 
uh, let me know at Sorgatron on Twitter. I, I'd love to talk with anybody about uh, this kind of production and what we're doing there. Um, anything to improve. And I love uh, some people we're getting on the team that are doing a lot of video, video for other companies in the area. Other 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 wrestling companies in the area. Um, Rob that joined us this week actually works with Five Star Wrestling. That's north of the city. Um, the guy from that joined us in Clearfield, he actually has helped with Phoenix Pro out towards Johnstown, I believe, maybe Altoona. So it, it's really cool to kind of get those guys in and 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 hopefully and really improve each other's products. I hope by getting. You know, exchanging notes basically and seeing how the other side does it and 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 helping that out a little bit. And I'm really glad to see that and, and, and help all of this get out there to a point. Check us out, Sorgatron.com, and I hope you're checking out the weekly challenge we did last Tuesday. This last Tuesday, a video challenge. Try to do a video a day for five days a week. Uh, share it. We'll critique it. We'll have some fun with it. We'll talk about it on the show next week, next Tuesday, when we do another weekly challenge. Uh, something to get you in front of a camera, get used to doing this. Maybe you periscope it. And I probably should tell you guys about my Periscope situation last night where I just put it on while I was playing a video game. Uh, check that out. That conversation's on Twitter this morning at Sorgatron over there. And we'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.